Mailbag is here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hi. Mailbag. Hi. We're doing the Q and A. Oh, Have you guys been waiting ben. for it? Good, because we want you to listen to us answer questions. Because if not, what does ma- what matters in our lives anymore? What does the matter? mailbag? The mailbag has been like the carrot in front of the stick. Where every week I'm like, okay, guys, uh, listeners, it's gonna happen. Get your question. And the, oh no, just, just kidding. Next week, get your questions in. Uh, and, and I'm happy to say that it's uh, finally. Here. It's here. It's here. Finally. In honor here. of Canadian Thanksgiving when we're recording it. <laughs> in honor of the harvest, we bring you a bountiful q and I'm so thankful for all these questions. <laughs> I'm thankful for all these questions that have been submitted to us uh, and, and that we'll be going through. So uh, to anyone who did uh, submit a question, uh, thank you a bunch. Uh, we really appreciate that. Also, something I think worth saying is that this episode comes out at a time which is not typical for our episodes. Typically, our Q&A episodes come out in the midst of uh, Weenie Hollow at the end of October. Uh, mm-hmm. To one, to those of you listening to this in time as it is released, uh, it, that is a couple weeks away. Uh, and so this is early. And uh, the reason for that is that this is going to be the last uh, episode on the feed for a little while. Uh, because after this, we are going to be going into a hiatus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No episodes out. We just all need a little bit of a break, a refresher. Uh, yes. It's been like almost five years of... It, weekly We have releases. not missed a week. Literally. We missed a week. Five years. We need some time. We need, yeah. yeah. <laughs> to our detriment, we have not missed a week. Uh, so uh, uh, thank you uh, for the years of support. And we will be back in the new year sometime uh, to finish off all the episodes. Uh, apologies that we're leaving you off on like a cliffhanger of, oh, what is going to happen right now? And we didn't finish that arc. Uh, but uh, nothing I can say. Apologies. Uh, we'll finish it when we get back to it, okay? Uh, anyone else have to say anything to say on that? And I think we'll we'll let everybody know either with like an announcement post, like on Instagram yeah. or something like that. Hey, we plan on we plan on coming back. You can yeah. expect a new episode this mm-hmm. upcoming week or something like that. Absolutely. Thank you guys for all the support that you've given us over the years. It's made doing this so fun and. I think that the podcast will be better for having had a little break. Absolutely. And also, I totally thank you agree. to, I, I feel like I wanted to give a shout out and a thank you to the people on Discord who have been so mm-hmm. overwhelmingly kind to yeah. the announcement mm-hmm. that we made on there about us going yeah. on hiatus for a bit. It's been so nice. And yeah, do, going consistent for five years, especially for people who's, who are editing the episodes, like they deserve a break. They deserve people who rest. edit and yeah. run the show. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Luke, I need to rest a little. To our mysterious editors out there, yeah. whoever ye may be. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to go on a bit of, it's going to be a siesta. Uh, we'll be back though. Uh, hold your yes. breath for us. Mm-hmm. I would just like to say that this is this is a, a for real hiatus, and this is not mm-hmm. One Direction's hiatus. Oh um, my god! One Direction had a hiatus out there. Who's the Zane? Uh, well, Sarah, <laughs> you already do your own stuff, so I think that very easily oh, makes no. you Zane. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I'm never speaking of the podcast again. <laughs> not true. Not true. Okay. Uh, but we're not here to talk about hiatus stuff. Sorry. We're here to answer some fucking letters that you've mailed yeah! to Letters. Letters. Yeah. We <laughs> just got a letter. Dear I can't say that. Trials and trebuchets. Yeah. Uh, I'm a big another thing fan. That you should, another thing you should know about this episode is that we're all in person together in the same room recording it. And mm. I do, I did print out every single question. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you made like wax seals and envelopes. It's, it's it makes it look very yeah. nice. The the wax seals look great. The parchment is nice and <laughs> the authentic yeah, I'm a, lack a of air conditioning. Feeling. I'm a big and prop of air. Did you spray these with perfume? It's nice. Oh, wow. It's like Elle Woods' it's, resume. It's, it's interesting because it's like it's like different perfumes for like each. It's like it's like you made the illusion of everyone, mm-hmm. all these people are different people like writing letters to us. Yeah, I, and they have a signature scent. I captured their musk in it. Oh, yeah. uh, Luca's is coffee and chocolate. <laughs> Lady Gold's is fresh sage. <laughs> Uh, who else? That uh, tarot Oceanic is, probably uh, smells like the woods. Tarot. The wood. Oceanic <laughs> smells like the ocean, of course. Uh, yeah, obviously. Nonetheless, thank you. Uh, Hadley's, yours is pine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nonetheless, uh, let's get, get off to a, uh, a very quick start. We've only spent 20 seconds uh, setting everything up. So uh, mm-hmm. why don't we jump in? 
Uh, we're not going to go around in, in, in order this time. We're just going to go uh, down our little list of questions that we've all pre-selected. Uh, so I believe, Ben, you'll be starting us off. Yeah, and we're going to start off with a simple question, and this one is from Nico. Uh, what Thanks, D&D Nico. class would you not see yourself playing, mm. or at least not enjoying? Is there any particular thing repelling you from it? I'm just going to say this out here. I think Ranger's lame as fuck. Yes! <laughs> what? That's going to be mine. <laughs> Ranger, all my homies hate Ranger. Worst class. I am a certified standard. Ranger uh, hater. I don't think that class so does anything. I, yeah, crazy. I think it's, it's so, bad. so boring. That's, Holy That's very shit. interesting yeah. information the to have. Hate just <laughs> swung I, in. I personally... I'm a fuck. I hate wizards. I play a wizard <laughs> once for a Aww. one shot once. And it was the worst time I've ever fucking had. They're so shitty. It's like, oh, did you want class features? No. You have just fucking spells. And, and like, oh, you just have to pre predict. <laughs> like, it's not even a prepared spell cap. I want to be able to pre prepare my spells and like custom fit. Isn't that not the joy of a wizard? Why do I have. To- what the fuck is all this bullshit about having a spell book? It's stupid. If you want to play a fucking wizard, just play a sorcerer. It's exactly what you want, except it it's good. <laughs> Typical Damn. sorcerer ignorance. What kind of wizard did you play? I played an abjurer. Oh, well, that's why. Yeah, that's your no. problem. No. <laughs> Abjuration is like the most boring wizard you could play. That's a shitty opinion. Play but like it's a yours. blade singer. Play oh, like, I, if I want to play blade singer, I'm just going to fucking play a paladin. I don't want to play this. I, I'm a purist. I hate all this extra shit. I'm an old man. <laughs> Maybe that's why you... Fucking hate Winsler so much. You decided to kill him all. <laughs> Damn. I think because number one, uh, I've played a ranger before and I love it. So mm-hmm. how dare both of you? Okay, it's so Rangers moving great. on. I think because I do, I do like all the different classes and what they do. I think I wouldn't go with a warlock though mm, because I'm mm. bad at listening to a higher authority <laughs> than myself. <laughs> I think I think there's like some like mechanical stuff. I think there's like a warlock is like a build your own class. I think for mm. the kind of player you are, Sam, I feel like build your own class and, and memorize all these a thousand different class features and, and weigh them against one another. Nope. Which one's the best for your build? Like, I, I think that's that. fun for a specific type of person. That's the shit. I, I'm playing a warlock like, right now in my other campaign and that is the shit that I fucking live it's for. It's so, so good. good. You wanna, that's you, me bait. You want to you do a heist warlock? Oh, you can do a fucking heist warlock. You want Right? You wanna, it's, yeah, I, yeah. This is not a warlock praise podcast, but warlocks are pretty good. <laughs> I wish it was. Warlocks are great. I, yeah, my, my big thing is just like, there are so many, because I feel like, play. yeah, there's like so many extra yeah. steps and like, mm-hmm. I feel like you ha- I have to have like a long conversation before even going into the first day before yeah. I can be like, comfortable enough to be like, okay, <laughs> we have to be these two different characters talking to each other now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like you could play a nice, like, champion fighter, Sam. Like, swing a big sword, Damn. do some big damage. Hell I mean yeah. that in a good way. Like, it's like very classic, like, D&D ass D&D. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel there's like that's pretty, very. There's some really good classes that are just, like, uh, you know, straightforward. Sometimes yeah. less is more. Else, sometimes less is so much more. It, it is. Yeah. It is. Carla? That's a hard question because I haven't dabbled on every single um, class yet, so I don't know mm-hmm. if I like or hate them. Just um, say ranger. <laughs> just say warlock. Just say wizard. <laughs> stop saying. <laughs> just stop I, making her say ranger. <laughs> I would say that I love. Don't say rogue. I, hate- <laughs> 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 I was gonna say I wouldn't want to play an. Artificer. Mm. Uh, they do have a lot of shit. They yeah, do. it's a bit confusing. It's kinda confusing. I'm very bad at um, reading comprehension, <laughs> so I <laughs> want something easy and pretty straightforward. Would you like um, a, a feature that is three paragraphs long? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did play. I played an artificer once, and I think I got the rules wrong for my cannons every single time. <laughs> but I'm gonna blame that on D and D Beyond because it doesn't show you all that shit. Uh, Fuck but that's D&D neither Beyond. here nor there. Uh, that's yeah. it. That's the question. Uh, thank you, it. Nico, for Wait, asking. Wait, Sarah did not answer. Sarah said Ranger. Yeah. Oh. I said Ranger. I didn't get oh, to, is that true? I didn't get to elaborate, okay, in all fairness. Okay. No, um, I think for me, because I've played, <laughs> I've played a Ranger in two long-term campaigns, and I think the thing is that, like, objectively, numerically, mechanically, there is nothing wrong with them in the sense that, like, they can do some good damage. Like, the Tasha's Ranger especially gives you lots of nice class features to play with. But what I think the issue becomes is that playing a ranger becomes very boring and monotonous when like in combat every single turn if you want to 
be, do the optimal thing. You're kind of just doing the same thing. You're going to be like describing it the same, <laughs> even with the ways where you can shake it up. I feel like you very quickly run out of ways to like manipulate a battlefield in an interesting or dramatic way. Like compare this to either a class like, like Bard, which mm -hmm. I'm playing with Mira, where there are, you know, a nice variety of spells that can be used like in a lot of different situations, or I'm playing like a monk with some other fun feats in my other campaign as well, mm -hmm. where it's like, even if you are doing the same moves, like, you know, flurry of blows and that sort of thing, you can consistently describe it in various interesting ways where it feels like you're a more active part of the battlefield mm -hmm. as opposed to just like waiting for your turn to come so that you can fire off an arrow. Yeah. So yeah, I don't that like Ranger. Sense. I just, it's, me it's mechanically numerically good. I just don't think it's fun. Is the thing that mm. the problem is, Sarah, you're trying to optimize playing the shittiest class in D&D. And you just need to let go. You need to re let go with reckless <laughs> abandon and just say, I'm not going to do the optimal thing. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> I will say, I do kind of understand because like, I remember the very first thing we all played together yeah. was in university. I was a ranger during that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think, and I, I don't know, I felt like it was a very nice way to like start the first steps going into, here's what other classes do as well. But like, you yeah. can kind of like get into, oh, this is sort of what you can do in these games. And then mm -hmm. here's a dog. And it's like, yes, dog. <laughs> <laughs> I think a ranger appeals to a very specific type of person. I think it's very not fun for if you're not that kind of person, which mm -hmm. two of you uh, seemingly are not. Uh, <laughs> that's a very long way to answer. Holy shit. Was that 10 minutes on that single question? Um, no, that was like, Eight minutes. We were doing like intros okay. and moments yeah, of yeah, silence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay. uh, up next, th or, thank you, Nico, for that question. Uh, up next, this is a question for everyone, uh, or not really everyone. It's kind of just for me, but I think it's really funny. Oceanic, <laughs> uh, do you create and delete the mailroom each year, or do you just hide and reveal it? I just hide and I just hide it and make a new one. Uh, they all the mailroom is the channel on our Discord server for asking questions, questions for those of you. The who aren't funnier honest. answer is yes, we do delete it and remake it every time. I don't, I don't <laughs> delete it. I just hide it and make a new one. I know, but it'd be funny <laughs> if you did it delete it, and then you would be and like, oh. Oh, shit, we have to too. make the mailroom again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for the question, Oceanic. Uh, up next, I believe uh, Sam. Up next is, yes. And this is a question from Slother. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think Boo deserved it? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck no. <laughs> Things went from like zero to a hundred very quickly near the end there. Um, I feel no. like they're... Maybe in one universe, but like it got straight up murdered. It got straight to murder. The truth is, here's the thing: Winsler and Boo can't be in the same room because there's mm -hmm. only one Winsler. So we had to off him one way or another. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, had to happen. It's like <laughs> the universe would have literally imploded, and then we would just all be in space. Yeah. But, but I do one... think that he does not deserve it. Mm -hmm. Boo yeah. morally does not deserve it. It was the wrong thing to do to kill him. We killed him because he had a magic item that we wanted. Yep. Like, yeah. let's be clear. There is no moral justification for killing him. I do think he sort of narratively deserves it in the sense that he had an option that could have saved his life that he chose mm -hmm. not to take, as opposed to the option that would have meant certain death. Yeah. Selty very well could have killed him and done horrible things to him, but that was a maybe. Us killing him was a definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, so in that sense, that 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 kind of is on him, I think, a little bit. <laughs> in all elements not, that not are... It's not in a moral sense. <laughs> There's no moral justification for killing him. But also, like, let's be real here. <laughs> in all aspects that are non-mechanical, it was not right to kill him. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it made perfect sense. Don't get, like, Boo... Oh, yeah. Boo, Boo had was being to die. played true to who he yes, was he in a way that die. I really like. Let uh, me be There's clear. a joyous world out there. Uh, that uh, Bood lives and he just goes off into the fucking west horizon and uh, uh, not death because I understand that that's a uh, you know compare or a metaphor for death as well but uh, he just goes off into the sunset and uh, he just goes off and does his misadventures being a creepy or not creepy uh, just a, a skeevy little man elsewhere <laughs> little um, weasel if, of a guy yeah skeevy tall if you guy die yeah. and you're already mm -hmm. in like what hell is do you just mm -hmm. go to another layer or do you just yeah like... turbo hell yeah they put you in the basement turbo hell go to limbo okay it will make it harder for him that's... to get out then 
Uh, yeah, that's the question. Thanks, Slother. Yeah. Uh, the next one here comes from two people. You asked the same question, but uh, and so I will combine them. This is from Taro and Jay. For Luke, now is the chance. Tell us oh about the dwarf gosh. lore. <laughs> We're yes. asking about the dwarfs. God. Specifically stuff like why the Claybeards, like Winsler's parents, are on f- land farming instead of in a mountain. The schism, just whatever you'd like. Additional... I- additionally, any hints on what could have happened with Winslow's scroll case? It haunts me. Also, this is from Jay for Luke. What's up with the dwarves? Uh, the <laughs> All right, here we go. Out- the claybeards are outside of the mountain because they are part of the Dareheim dwarves. Those are the southern dwarves. Those are one of the southern accents. Uh, they're kind of like a bit more chilled out, less uh, cloistered in. Uh, they will have people out in the fields. They have people all the way up and down the mud flats. Uh, they have a very expansive outer city and inner city uh, where uh, a lot of people are welcome. Uh, the Toldier dwarves, the northern dwarves, are much more cloistered, much more secretive, uh, very uh, keep to dwarven kind and don't really open the doors for anyone, stay inside the mountain, dig tunnels deep uh etc 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 uh that's it um what th- what what happened with winsler scroll case mm. who for knows those of you who are not able to see our screen they shrugged <laughs> lost yeah, to time the- that scroll cases about- <laughs> thank you for asking about the dwarves though they were one of the first things i made in this world setting and they're near and dear to my heart they're just little guys in the dirt in the muck uh born of mud and silt and stone born of the mud we thrive in the mud <laughs> Someone should ask this now. Um, oh. The next question is from Amber. Do you know? It's not really a question. It's, it's just a fun fact. It's I like just it. a fun yeah. fact. Do you know that Ben <laughs> has done the most outros as of episode 241 with 79, followed close by Sarah at 77? For some reason, that just this. feels incorrect. It's crazy. Yeah, that doesn't feel right. It does not feel like shocked. I have done the most outros. I feel like it's. I feel like Carla really has done the most outros. It no. seems. No, no. Carla, Carla's know. done the most outros if we count just the time it took to do the <laughs> outro. Um, I guess. Yeah. I, I was. Ju- I'm just really impressed with the split because I don't really keep track of who did the previous episode. I'm just like you, whoever I. You see just go by vibes. I just know. Yeah, whoever's the I, vibes. And I don't choose Sam because I know it. Sam gets really anxious about it. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I've done it only like a couple of times. And two of those times, my microphone decided just to not work. So I had to redo it again. So it's cursed. But yeah. Like, yeah. I've, I've yeah. always taken it as like, because like we only ever, ever could like re- <sighs> two episodes at once. Yeah, so like you're always you always tend to go with either Sarah first and then Ben, and I know sometimes Carla will also go in there. And yeah. I was banned from doing the outro. <laughs> even then, even then, if we consider that, it, like if we combine all the episodes and all the outros that we've done, Carla is not mm-hmm. far behind based on the numbers. No, here, not at all. Seventy nine, seventy seven. That's only like recently. half. I feel yeah. like I've only yeah. done thirty. No, that's no way. No, no we've actually like, done way more, more than that. Recently, right? Was what I noticed. It's really fun. It's it good. brings so much joy to my heart when people just do like statistics about right? trials and trebs. <laughs> right. Someone, I think it's Simon on I the Discord server, breath. has this entire like sheet full of just various stats about the length of each arc. Um, mm-hmm. How many how many swear words were said in each <laughs> arc? Even was there a musical intro? Been, yeah. And I, I, as a person who likes to just have random analytics for things mm-hmm. in my life, you know. A, a TNT wrapped style thing makes me incredibly happy. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's just so cool that people do that. 100%. Next question. I know that I just asked the last one, but this is a question that I specifically chose because I'm a curious cat. Yeah, this question mm-hmm. is Carla vibes. From Nat. <laughs> What would have happened with the circlets in Lem if they hadn't gotten rid of them? Mm, the circlets that uh, Horse was trying to use upon her sister, Diana, uh, who was, uh, I'll make a meta note here. Uh, the name Diana was attempted to be expunged from this episode of the mailbag by one of our constituent members. However, uh, we could sneak <laughs> it in on this question. Uh, nonetheless, they were uh, for pact breaking or pact uh, transferring. Uh, Diana wanted to, or rather Horse wanted to take over uh, Diona, Diana's pact, godly pact, uh, or written down there, uh, so that she would be able to leave uh, the Plain of Lem. That was pretty much it. Oh, it's a good thing we uh, stopped that then. Per the words written on the stone, uh, Horst was trapped in Lem forever, forced to like look over and preside over the people, and she would like to leave sometimes. Oh. That was it. Okay. Why? Because she wants to party up? In- <laughs> Probably, yeah. I don't know. That's a pretty party centric <laughs> place already. <laughs> she wants to go lay on a beach somewhere and not be bothered by a bunch of little creatures. That's like the ethos of so many like, characters hey. in the show. We just want to get Maybe. away and go to like, go yeah. on like a beach and vacation. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. 
Pretty simple. Maybe to would have been very handy snow. if uh, would have been pretty handy if a warlock for say wanted to get out of her pact very easily by transferring it, it onto like I don't know a, a little homunculus or something. It would have. It would have. Luke. <laughs> You're correct. If only we could have. If, if only. On, if only we could have. Should have. Would have. I told my players what something was. <laughs> but yeah, that's the answer to that question. Uh, thank you for asking that. Thanks. Thank you. All right. So this next question comes from uh, Sherry Dragonwood. If you had the opportunity. To change the podcast so an NPC first appears an arc earlier, who would you pick? Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. I like that it's just one arc earlier. Only um, one. <laughs> one specific arc. How interesting would it be if we just found artists in the fucking book? Oh, that would have been actually Honestly, like, yeah. what, like, what the f- If there was, like, a previous interaction with him? <laughs> yeah, and imagine just, like, oh, who the fuck is this guy? Maybe not. What's or imagine if there here? was, like, just a passing uh, person in the archives, right? You, like, uh, just walk past him and it's, like, this glancing thing. I was about to say, that would have uh, been kind of cool, uh, like, a moment of, like, like, maybe him just being, like, hey, be careful or whatever the heck. And then everyone was, like, who the fuck was that guy? Then, like, the next... Arc giving good advice. In. Yeah, that would never happen. That's unreal. no. We're talking about early, um, early, early uh, podcast artists, though. Hmm. Maybe, maybe loud. Maybe loud. No, but I think him showing up and being with the fucking grung is fun. Loud and um, scandal. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm. Tra- <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, now that we say that, I kind of like just that. outside in the bushes, watching inside, just like taking over I- the form of someone. Oh my god. Uh, you ask this question, and then all the NPCs leave my head. I think it would have been interesting. I'm trying to remember what happened before our first time going to Isseth, though, because I think just meeting Selty was, earlier would have been kind yeah. of interesting. Mm. Mm. I think Ferdinand in Nebulosis would be a fun oh. setting oh. for her. Oh. I know that's not one arc earlier, but yeah. I think you could do a lot of fun in like that underground city with like mm-hmm. someone who trades mm-hmm. faces, especially like oh here's all these like prominent yeah. people that could be deceived and snuck around. You that could do a lot of fun yeah. stuff like through the streets of the markets of Nebulosis, not like body swapping and not knowing if you're chasing the right person. Lots of fun shenanigans. That would have been mm-hmm. really, really cool. Oh my gosh, it's hard to remember mm-hmm. everything. It's been five years and I'm an old woman. <laughs> um, I'm an old woman. <laughs> what if we get? Because what was before Nebulosis? Uh, Whiteout. Mm-hmm. Or no. Uh, uh, food for uh, Thought, Food I for think. Thought, yeah. What if we get um, <laughs> Ocean and Food for Thought? How? Where Ocean's <laughs> like, Ocean's like, I kidnapped your daughter because you owe me. You owe me fucking money. <laughs> what, if, what if the only, pr- there's like three people at dinner and one of them is Ocean along with Elric, Serenup, and Mira mm. uh, at Delness's fucking birthday dinner and she's like, I'm just here trying to like get my money back. Uh, I'm just Like here for showed fun. up to be I like, like hey, we'll have a knock, knock. Face. I think and every NPC is a Introduced perfectly exactly when they should. <laughs> yeah, I, can you tell that I don't actually believe that? I'm sure the lie is flawless. Honestly, no. I liked, I liked, uh, I liked Sarah's idea there. I that yeah. would have been really, that would have been really cool. I think and that confusing really in well. like a sea of people to have all that stuff happen. The yeah. shenanigans there that would, oh, that would have been sick. Just changing a shape changer, a person who changes faces in the sea of crowds in a giant city. That's a great, it's a very ripe plot hook. Mm. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, on to the next one. Uh, the next one is from Oceanic. This is for mm. you specifically, Luke. Where is Melon? Is he safe? <laughs> is he all right? Uh, his house and home was burnt to ash Damn. Uh, <laughs> by the marching army of uh, Grung on their way to the Loft of Elders. He is uh, currently displaced, uh, living the life of Vagrant across the plain of Isithil. I mean, he did sort of see that place as a burden. Mm-hmm. Like, he did. He did. He did. There's it's worse true. ways to live for him. Now he gets insurance, I'm sure. I should feel sad, <laughs> but instead I am free. Ah. But he did get released from Loud's uh, clutches. He didn't just That's get good. slaughtered. Mm-hmm. That was the deal, you know? Well, I'm glad they made it. Him. Good job. And onwards to the next question. Thank you, Oceanic, for that previous question. Uh, this one is asked by Rachel291. Do you think there are circumstances where your character would turn on the rest of the party? If so, what would be the thing that makes them do it? So I, this is a very interesting question. I don't know if, um, I don't know if Winsler has the capacity to do such a thing, but if he did, it would probably be for some silly, petty reason <laughs> as, as he's want to make decisions. Mm. On the whim. On the whim, yeah. What kind of petty? Like how, how small is it? Like, oh, 
he did not get invited to a dinner party. So that's a huge deal. <laughs> Who would just invite Winsler from yeah. a dinner yeah. party? I think it would be more of like a culmination of like small thing. It's like, oh, I'm not getting invited to something. Oh, that's okay. And it's just like. I don't know. Maybe we don't want to hang out with you, small Damn. man. Damn. <laughs> so then you just turn Damn. on them and become a lich, and then uh, ah! right, like that's the obvious. Well, the lich, the the Winsler lich theory is still a very possible <laughs> theory that could happen, but you Ooh. never know. Yeah, I think overall, I don't think he actually has the capacity to do such a thing. Mm. Realistically, yeah, I think it would have to be something very high stakes for Mira. Like at this point, mm -hmm. like they have all been through so much together that it's very difficult to envision a circumstance that extreme. Um, choose your like girlfriend would... or choose your friends. That's easy. What's the yeah? She would Spider choose her friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. She likes Delness very much, but also mm. it's just it's just a girl. Mm. Poor Delness. Yeah, There's I, I, girl like it would have to be. There. Yeah, there are more it would have to be something of cosmic significance, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that kind of falls under the same thing with Sarah. And it's like I, we've been through so much at this point. I think it would have to be like, and I think we did have a, a glimpse of like a fight starting because of the whole section of like, what do we do with Boo? Like that fight that happened there. Yeah, it has to, it has to be like a huge like moral thing of like maybe like if the team was like we have to trust this big evil thing that we know is ev big and evil for Saren up to be like, okay, you know what? Peace out. Bye. I can't. <laughs> yeah. Y'all ridiculous. Get out. Mm -hmm. Somehow, why does it feel like out of the three of us, Integrity is the one three. who's the most likely to... I mean, yeah. She's a warlock like, of the progenitor. Yeah. yeah. Integrity yeah. would sell the you out for like 600 bucks. The progenitor's like literally yeah. like in your head all the time and being like, well, not all the time, but you know what sometimes. I mean. Like sometimes he'll also, pop and be like, e <laughs> once every seventy episodes. Yeah. Very motivated by money and wealth. Very yes. motivated by money. Yes. Has so I feel like <laughs> it wouldn't like obviously it needs to be a, a big enough of a deal, but she definitely has the highest capacity based mm -hmm. on how she is, like her personality, her goals. Mm. Um. I think it yeah. wouldn't be that hard. I can't really think of anything specific. You have asked Sarah up a couple of times, hey, what if we sold you out and then, well, you know, we'll break you out afterwards, but get we would the get money. the money for yeah. it. That has happened. That has, that has it's been a, been a couple of times. And also, I think your roommate also kind of did that at one point too. No. <laughs> she was just like, what's it, what's it like being such a valuable commodity in this world. <laughs> uh, thank you for the question, though, Rachel291. Good question. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, Rachel291. Thanks. Oh, it's my turn. It's from Taro. If integrity is a queen piece in chess because she is a queen, um, what piece is everyone else, both PCs and NPCs, if you'd like? Mm -hmm. We got to sketch out the full board here. Mm. Of course. So yeah. there's the king. There's the queen, there's the bishop, there's the rook, there's the knight, the knight, the horsey, the there's knight, the horsey, <laughs> there's the pawn, and there's the pawn. Yeah. Mira's a rook. Yes. That makes sense to me. I don't know a does. pawn. Are you sure she's a rook? I feel like that's not true though. <laughs> you Sarah. just said definitely. No, I think that the, the the thing that strikes me is like the I like to, the move in straight lines being a very aggressive or very uh, advantageous piece. I, like I think Mira sits more of like a bishop, a bishop though. Maybe, maybe it's just the. I diagonals. feel like early Mira, early Mira, maybe. But I feel mm, like Mira, as she is now, is more rook than bishop. Yeah, I. I she used to be right kind right. of flighty, kind of like, you know, Circuitous. the bishop is gonna like exactly. But yeah. I feel like now. Yeah, I agree with that. Great Am argument. I stepping over a hmm. line by saying I also think Sarenep would. Go into rook, or are you guys thinking well, of something there can only different? Be one rook, silly goose. Well, there's, there's only one rook in chess. Bishop. No, there's, two there's only one rook. There's two mirrors on the board. Oh, okay. oh, okay, oh, okay. Oh. okay, I understand. Uh, okay, I <laughs> um, I maybe, maybe Serenith would be the knight. Mm. Interesting. Like, can can like like it's not like a straight line for her. She can kind of like move forward and then like jump to the side and He's stab somebody. Hesitant. That's Winsler to me. I, Winsler think, I thought very Winsler nice. of the night. He's yeah. kind of, you know, you can't really predict his next move. Mm -hmm. like. Okay. But also, oh, watch out. <laughs> very yes. valuable, very valuable piece. If very you, valuable uh, piece. Yeah. I think it's it's easy Sarah to come fits. back, you know, like. But you got to um, know how to play it. Like yeah. tricky. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think Sarah fits our uh, criteria for uh, Bishop. 
uh, in the kind of like circuitous, not direct kind of like not direct. Oh, I want to. <laughs> but it's diagonal. The, the diagonal line is a lightning bolt shooting at somebody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, king and pawn. Hmm. Would it be mean to say maybe the because you said it would be one character for each? Yeah. <sighs> yes. Artist is the king. He's oh. very valuable, but he can't ah, do anything. That's a great oh point. My that's gosh, really that's good. True. That's really good. True. And Delness. Okay, I would say that Delness oh. is a pawn on like mm-hmm. the seventh rank. Or I think that's what it's called, where it's like, oh, it's just a little pawn. Don't worry. Bam, it promotes and then you're fucked. Ooh. Yeah. Because she's a lich now. Yeah. <laughs> ah, uh, and small disposable. Small potential for greatness. Very disposable, as we already covered in this episode. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but fantastic I also- answers. But, like, the thing is that yeah. pawns can also do such, like, a great job of, you know, attacking. Because, mm-hmm. like, they can... Yeah. Like, Sarah, yeah. Like, you can, can put them as a, like, a barrier. Like, mm-hmm. so that the target is not on us. Oh, so also, you're saying that that Delness is going to be, like... The... The Angelica's also pawn. True. That's true. Angelica wishes that she was a bishop, but she's a pawn. The pawn's set up for... Uh, other things to happen on the board. Yeah, like yeah. pawns. Like I, yeah. I know that um, there's there was a fun time where like if the if you leave the pawn somewhere long enough, someone might forget it, put their put, put their person in the wrong place, then the pawn yeah. just fucking takes them out. Okay, exactly. then that's more of a uh, Angelic event. Damn, because Dallas can't do. Yeah, so. Angelic's gonna fucking wake up and stab us. <laughs> Maybe who who's to say? <laughs> who is to uh, say? Anyways, thank you, Taro, for that question. Thank you. Thank you. On to the next question. A question Woo! from somebody by the name of Bus. Bus. Assuming graduation is endgame, what would Swim do after graduating? Would they get regular old jobs or focus on other goals? And for Luke, dealer's choice on student NPCs post-school plan. I've said this many times before, I think, and I'm pretty sure it's many people know what the plan is. Winsler is just going to graduate and use whatever magic he's learned to help out the farm, really. That's, that's his end goal. He wants yeah. to be there for his family. The most magical farmer this side of the mountains. Truly. <laughs> you can like sell magic carrots. <laughs> yeah. Mira started out just being like, I want to be a musician. And while I think that she is still very like passionate about music, I can see Mira as she has gotten more into like, you know, community organizing as she was doing the election stuff. And now with the stuff with Crow, I can see her doing something more similar to that uh, mm-hmm. with her life of like, I don't know exactly what form this could take, but something a little bit more um, community activism centric and a Mm. little bit less, um, you know, directly performing centric. Like I could see her going into politics or something like that, especially now with her like all Algram ties. Although I think that is a bridge that she, you know, intends to burn. But I think Mm -hmm. that is another reason why it's like, oh, I could get some of this like social capital here for myself. Mm -hmm. You could be a lobbyist. She could be a lobbyist. I think with Sarah Neff, she's on. She's going to be on the run. Like I don't think she's going to have a place to like really settle down anymore. So she's just going to be traveling just nonstop, basically. You sail west. You should sail west. Leave this fucking place behind. You know? <laughs> Leave. Get the fuck out Find of here. Philip. Nah. Uh, nah. Chances of finding <laughs> Philip are very low. Who has the at time? Point. Who needs him? Yeah. There are more fish in the sea, and you will literally be on the ocean. Have fun. I think integrity post graduation is um, world domination. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah that fits <laughs> so also like, politics but how, like i don't know where but <laughs> just somehow you know, somewhere she ended up the- being this way this was not my plan when i first started this podcast i was just gonna be like i just love stabbing stabbing um <laughs> But then money became a thing. Um, power was offered to her. I, uh, that's my answer. You money should also and power. sell West and get out of here because you can probably take over a different <laughs> land. Yeah. Because can you imagine Integrity taking over the shoe store? No. That's no. your older brother's job. Very clearly. You're the middle child. You inherit nothing. That's sad. Damn. Instead, you will inherit the world. There you go. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm question. glad that we're in a room of the youngest children. <laughs> yeah, we're youngest True. children here. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you, for you for the question. question. On to the next one. Hello, this next question came from a bird. If Swim and the other <laughs> students were regular people at a modern mundane mm. college, what degrees and careers would they pursue? Mm. 
outside like the obvious, which is like fine arts slash music, I could see like in this era, like law school Mira, like really stressed law student, like isn't doing great in classes, but do is doing like a million like clerkships and things like that. And like schmoozing all the professors. I don't know. That's a very easy thing for me to picture. Yeah. I think Serenip started at the school with something that her parents laid out for her degree and now she's yeah. trying to fucking engineering. Yeah, like oh. something like that. And now she's trying to like go into a trade school. <laughs> she's trying to sneak yeah. out to like to become like just a contract person to just kind of go, go to fucking do her own like thing. culinary school or some fucking shit. Oh, like, that would be oh, my. sick. Yes, that kind of stuff. Winsler would probably go into environmental science after wow. fun, after oh. fiddling around with you know you know it's this is just a story about what I would have done if I got a second <laughs> chance I would just go to environmental science that's what Windsor would do he would be an environmental who scientist. would go into environmental science what kind of nerd would do that yeah really <laughs> for those of you listening um, the, just the look of just sadness that crossed Luke's face <laughs> I, Windsor's a fucking electrical engineer I oh know yeah you could about. do that too yeah. minor in environmental science perhaps yeah mm. easily yeah. Integrity um, I- Idleberry, the business school graduate among us. <laughs> Could be, but there's like a part of me that also thinks of integrity as like a comp sci dropout. Dang. Um, <laughs> trying to get into tech and it was just too much, too hard. Too much. <laughs> Literally the start yes. of my life. <laughs> and like start my own business, be my own girl boss. Your own boss. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. Would I, you send Facebook no, messages to your friends like, hey, doesn't girl. Like school or doesn't see the value of it. Stay in school, kids. Yeah, but it's 2023. Like, yeah. I can't think, apart from, you know, like a business major. But yeah. I, I've been told that business majoring doesn't really, like, set you up for a lot of things. <laughs> uh, thank you for the question, Bird. Sorry, thank business you. majors. No. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this next one is mine. Uh, Rot Junk says, if there was a TNT musical, <laughs> what kind of song would your character sing and what would it be about? Uh, for Luke, can you answer this one for Crow? I could have sworn I've answered this one before, but I feel like I may not have. Mira would have a patter song, yeah, uh, which is like one of those ones in musicals where they speak really, really quickly. They sing really quickly. Think about like not getting married today from company, something like that. That's very Mira. It's always been very Mira. And I'm just, you know, I'm a big patter song enjoyer. <laughs> the way you have to be very careful with the lyricism, both to make it easy to sing for the performer, mm-hmm. but also to have that nice flow of lyrics. Love a good patter song. I think it, Mira would sing one. Um, mm-hmm. Would you explain dif- like what the different kinds of musical songs there are because okay. you said that there's so patterns. you could have yep you could have a ballad so that would be like those sort of slow songs um that tend to be very like emotional um let's see you could do like an ensemble type song with someone else like a duet of with somebody you and Ida could have like a nice little thing going on <laughs> somebody might have more of a dance number um I could see Winsler having like a folk banjo like uh you know once or one of those musicals where the performers are bringing their instruments with them up onto stage that sort of mm-hmm. thing um let's see there could be like pop opera style stuff um there's you know there's musicals like Rent that are like rock operas uh rock-ish, that sort of thing. There's like that very classic musical theater. Like if you think about like Mary Poppins mm-hmm. or My Fair Lady or a show like that, um, maybe um, like those kind of old timey Broadway type things that you could, I could see like, I could see a character like Alina having one of mm. those like, oh, this is a song from a musical from the 40s yeah. type mm-hmm. things. Oh, okay. um, for mm. my answer for Crow, I'm not versed, and I know this isn't technically a musical, and I hate to draw this comparison. My apologies, everyone. But you know that scrapped song from the Lorax? Uh, Oh, Biggering? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) No, I can totally see it. Yeah. How bad can Crow be? How bad? How bad? Possibly. I, this, the only- Fan artists, take note. (laughs) The only thing I can really think of for Serenep, especially like earlier in the podcast, Serenep, is like- the go the distance song from the Hercules movie. Oh, <laughs> like a, I yeah, need to I find where song. I belong. Yeah. <laughs> just that fits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sarah's so a very emotional person. I feel like ballads would be the thing to go with on that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I want one where they're like, um, like an exposition kind of thing, <laughs> or it's like like somehow- the opening song in a show. Yes, where it's like 
oh, there's this thing that I just did and it's um like the, like the, like somehow the song that comes to mind is the one from like Jail Cell Tango. Oh, Ooh, that's really fun. Where integrity that's really fun. um yes. explains. They had the it coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's really <laughs> fun. I was thinking specifically of the song um Mungo Jerry and Rumple Teaser from Cats the Musical, which is um these two like <laughs> petty little cat thieves, cat burglars, right, who like yeah. break into houses and steal and they have this goofy little like thief number Mm -hmm. if you look up that one that gives me integrity vibes substantially i will look it up after we record oh yeah not right now i've never seen look it up right now we'll watch it we'll all yeah we'll all comment and be like is that integrity or not (laughs) (laughs) i am not a very musically inclined person when it comes to musicals um, about yourself, ben. Specific, specifically musicals but i feel like windsor probably wouldn't be doing any song that doesn't involve like someone else in the song you know like yeah. it's a, sort of like a duet kind of song or oh, it could be like Kurt. maybe yeah it's kind of like him like trying to speak with somebody or like convince them of something yeah, and it's like, just like a back and forth of like this is not wrong this is wrong this is right or some shit like yeah. that you know or like a, a like an uplifting sort of song to get somebody feeling better you know i did, i feel like he mm-hmm. as like a solo performer would not work very mm-hmm. well I like- just imagine the tension of a kurt uh winsler uh duet you know that 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 uh, electricity between the okay. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, you're, you're going into like uh, you're going to that second. I was thinking more like um like one of those like like Mr. Wiggles trying to or like Winslow trying to make Mr. Wiggles feel better or like vice versa like mm. because like you know Mr. Wiggles has been with Winslow for a very long time like mm-hmm. I feel like they would have a, have a nice little like duet yeah. Thank you, Rotchonk, for Thank the question. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It's a really good question. And next up, we have a question from Ivy. Was there a small spur of the moment character uh, in brackets NPC for Luke you made that really changed how you think about or view your oh, character? That should say character decision, I think. Yeah. So like a spur of the moment decision your character yeah. made, I guess. Uh, I one night just had an epiphany, or not an epiphany. It came to me in a dream. Uh, source, it came to me in a dream. Uh, I was like, oh, Angelica, I feel like uh, should be uh, who we currently see Angelica to be, right? Like, she was like this kind of like not paying attention. Oh, I really like gossip. I'm just here because my parents are paying for me to be here. And then at a certain moment, I was like, oh, what if I made her a bit more like, I want it to be about me. I want to be in this story kind of thing. And that drove yeah. a lot of like the Lindman uh, characterization mm-hmm. going on from like the early podcast into the mid podcast when they started to like kind of emerge as stronger characters. That was like something that was happening there. Uh, not necessarily happening in an episode, but it was like a definite moment uh, where I was just like, ooh, I'm going to chase this little uh, idea and see where it brings us to. And then it made them very prominent characters and I think very uh, well-liked characters in the show. I'm glad for it because I really mm. like that like storyline. Um, Me having too. These mm-hmm. NPCs have strong characterization and knowing you know, what their goals are because that makes for a good story. I think mm-hmm. for me, um, this is not like a very serious answer, but also pretty serious <laughs> is me just being like, yeah, I'll walk on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> that was, yeah. Integrity started out being very like, ooh, I'm mysterious. And then she became mysterious, yes. but also very silly in a way that yeah. I love. Mm-hmm. Yes. Integrity's silliness is... Think- that has fueled the integrity we see now just becoming more and more insane as the time goes on maybe it's the marshals applications classes like hitting her head a little bit too much (laughs) (laughs) a couple too many concussions yeah i will always say the defining moment for what changed winsler was you know giving away that one seventeenth of a soul in that one episode oh Oh, yeah (laughs) it's like Oh, this was just a spur of the moment thing because I wanted to do it. And now this has completely yeah. changed the way of my character where, oh, impulse really drives this character and how they <laughs> yes. and how they are played. I think, of course, I think Sarah Neps was the first kill, even though accidental, mm-hmm. like, because before that Deserve she was it. like trying to be much stronger. But then at that moment of like, oh, no, now I'm just now full of panic of what I've just done and what this mm-hmm. means for me in the future. Yeah, he deserved it. 
I think for Mira, it was actually like the decision to have Mira like have feelings for Delness. Mm. Not because I like specifically think that the romance subplot with Mira is like the most important thing about her, but rather the feelings she has for Delness are then a conduit for us learning other things about her, whether it's like, oh, you know, she's had a point where she's like very anxious about, you know, maybe experiencing and expressing her feelings indirectly Uh versus like that degree of like kind of overprotectiveness that she can have now, which you sort of saw with like when we saw her mom, like, oh, that's where she gets it. Like, it's not that I think, oh, who is this character dating is like the most important thing about them, but rather that that has allowed us to learn and discover other interesting things Mm -hmm. about Mira. So that's probably what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I always think it's like these little oblique things that come in where you make a character and you kind of have an Im- imagination of like, oh, this is the character, blah, 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 blah. And then something oblique comes in and you're like, oh, it's like, oh, I'm going to chase that little thread and like see what that tells me about what who my character is and what's going on here. And, and they can often be very enlightening, right? It's it's good fun. It's mm-hmm. emergent Absolutely. storytelling, right? There was a question yeah. on here that we didn't choose of like, oh, how much of your backstory did you prepare? And I think generally all of us didn't prepare that much backstory, like, very bare Mm -mm. bones and that has led to a lot of like us figuring out who the characters are over the course of the entire show versus having i think sometimes it can come into conflict in a game if you have a very pre-baked version of who the character is uh, and then you're like having difficulty either playing that or fitting that into the game in its proper way and i think we've avoided Mm -hmm. that for the large part um and I think it's been a very, it's been a boon to to see how everyone's uh, growing from these little oblique moments. Yeah, it comes back from the less is more thing. You have yeah. less of a backstory, but you have something to bounce your character off of. And then once you start playing through the campaign is when you start to discover who this character yeah. like really is and how they are. Yeah, just have a strong mm-hmm. idea of your character and then go forwards and see how they uh, interact with all those things. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Great question. Thank you Very so much. Very good question. Thank you. Uh, the next question we have is from Lady Gold. Uh, if you adapted the show into a TV show or such like, mm. what plot lines would be the highlights? Is there anything that would definitely oh. be cut for time? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so many. Uh, night- I feel like for me, like definitely mm-hmm. starting with... Um, I honestly, I think if this was a TV show, I would start with bookworms and then move into Sunken Hatch, like have us meet like in the book, have us all be there for various Mm -hmm. reasons and then have us discover the hatch together Mm -hmm. would be a fun like that way we kind of get to know the characters a little bit and then we kind of run into the other stuff. I feel like the big arcs that would be like kind of the major ones would be uh, probably Pitter Patter, Food for Thought, Mm -hmm. Shake and Break, Mm -hmm. Faint of Heart, Trading Places, um... Autumn's End Festival being like one and then phase ousting hell of a deal. Yeah. So the other ones, I don't think like I'm glad that they happened in the podcast. But if this was like a TV show yeah. where we were streamlining a lot of stuff, we could probably collapse some of that stuff in on itself. 100 percent. Yeah, I feel like there's so much bloat um, in the show. Uh, and you know it's it is what it is but if we were to adapt it in any conceivable way so much of that stuff would just like get caught or even just like oh god like this this uh, dream of being able to like edit this thing that you make on the fly right like the first time we record all this with some exceptions of like two episodes where we had to like re-record some stuff <laughs> um it's like this is the first time this stuff is happening and it, you can't just like edit it right like exactly. we can edit like the audio and like can cut stuff or rearrange scenes, which I, I've done, but I can't take a scene from like 2023 and like put the hooks that don't exist back into like 2019 episodes. Mm-hmm. But if we were ever to adapt that stuff, it, we could make it much more like, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a put together kind of production. Like streamlined. Here. Streamlined production here mm-hmm. where yeah. uh, like there's not just flags hanging or, or threads hanging in the wind for like, uh, hundreds of or tens of episodes, uh-huh. fifty episodes, right? Um, which is like some of the stuff that happens uh, here when we I take forever to get around to things. You know, are there any like ideas that you had that were not like originally part of your vision for the world that came in later that you think would be fun to have seeded earlier? Um, hmm. Or did you have a pretty consistent idea of what the world looked like the whole time? I. F- That's a great question, Sarah. I. F- this is like the the fallacy of it, right? I feel, it's like when you look at yourself in the mirror every single day and you're like, oh, that's just what I look like. I feel like it's been consistent and I'm like, oh, this has been, but I know there's been moments where I change stuff drastically to uh, fit a new idea or be like, okay, this 
the scope has expanded is a, a saying I've used a lot of times where I'm like, oh, uh, this is kind of changing. I'm going to try, kind of change who Tarasis is and like the characterization therein, right? Um, that stuff changes. You, the perspective of the world um, sometimes changes a bit. Uh, it's difficult, right? Like I still feel like I, I think about the world in the same way that I did when we start, but I logically can say that's absolutely 0% true, right? Um, there's also plot threads that I've just wholesale kind of abandoned, honestly, uh, because they aren't really relevant. Right. And we're, we're, uh, and they've been, they went like ignored for so long that I'm just like, okay, we're just not going to do that one. Right. And, and there's no use like beating a dead horse over it. It's just the nature of running a game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You put a lot of stuff out there and some stuff is going to be more exciting than others. Yeah. But I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, I think it's good to try some stuff out and see what works and like adapt on the fly because you can't, you know, be expected to like read people's minds. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I guess that's that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. Uh, On to the next one, which is mine from Not Not Lazari. Uh, What would be your character's go to coffee order? Mm-hmm. Um, I think for Mira, uh, double espresso with strawberries and cream frappuccino as the base, two extra pumps of mocha syrup, a double shot of espresso to be blended in, whipped cream uh, blended inside the frappuccino, scoop of java chips, more whipped cream, a drizzle of mocha, <laughs> and a little bit of strawberry puree, and then an extra sprinkle of whipped cream on top. Incredibly sweet, incredibly caffeinated. All caffeine Venti, shop all employees this. taking this order are literally <laughs> planning to kill me. Quaking in their food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Holy shit. Don't I don't know. When I imagine what Serenith would drink day to day, my very first thought is like a tea? Like I don't I don't know. Like I I don't know if she would if her go-to thing would be like Mind you, I'm comparing it to what Sarah just like put on like the yeah. blackboard at shot the of local espresso. Starbucks there. Um I feel like Sarah is just like a single shot of espresso kind of person. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then like, and one then black the end, coffee. Yeah, by the end of the day, she's like seeing anyone else who's like, Oh, I drink like seven coffees a day, and Sarah's like I only need the one, honestly, to get through the day. <laughs> she's still one of those people. But, but Sarah's like, a doesn't... tall girl. But Sarah's a tall girl? She's a tall girl. Yeah. Yeah, tall? you're tall. Wait, explain. Can you, can you so she would need more caffeine, yeah. is that what you're saying? More caffeine? Yeah. Oh, I see, I understand. Okay. Yeah, but remember, Serenep has trouble sleeping, so yeah, we don't exactly. have to worry about her being yeah. too tired. Oh. <laughs> I, I, like, I imagine, like, if, because I know, like, you know, like, those, like, drinks that, like, change color when you put, like, certain things in it? Like, not, like, putting cream mm-hmm. inside of a coffee, but, like, when you put, like, lemon inside of this type of tea, it turns it purple or something. Yes. Yeah. If yeah. we get that That's effect in the dr- in like the black coffee, Fancy like, novelty, magical coffee, like glitter or whatever the fuck, like edible like sparkles or whatever, I'd 100% drink that. I know that the question is a coffee order, um, but maybe Integrity does not need all that coffee in her life. <laughs> uh, and Integrity loves sweet things, so maybe she's just going to be a basic ass, ass basic ass bitch and just order a caramel ribbon crunch frappuccino from starbucks Ooh. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> carla just giving her own either. order I because don't... she is integrity idol very i don't know why but the way no? you were saying that i was like no caffeine in it whatsoever sweet and i don't know why my brain just went to like a glass of chocolate milk i don't know why it did that <laughs> but Integrity. Does so seem everyone, like a milk just um, exactly. just send me in my email like something to preload my Starbucks card. Um, it's <laughs> that is getting bleeped out so hard. It's getting double bleeped. Uh, I'm gonna answer for artist artesian. Uh, you know that like joke. I don't know if it's a joke, but you know that meme Pedro Pascal coffee that was just uh, like oh. eight shots of espresso. I feel <laughs> yeah. like artist artesian is like an eight shots of espresso sleep for four hours yeah. kind of person. You know the 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 the, the, the struggling academic. You know you have a lot. How of How is he to get still done. that tired? Because he because he's tired because he doesn't get that much. The sleep. Ca- the caffeine caffeine is, is not a stopgap for actually sleeping. Audience oh, and yeah. fellow cast true. members. I have cut Barely down on my. I bought. Okay, can I be real? I bought like triple shot Starbucks cans recently. Yeah. And the only thing that stopped me from continuing to drink them is they taste disgusting. I'm going back to double shots. <laughs> <laughs> They're good. I can't explain it. Windsor Wallaby's order. Windsor's coffee would probably be low quality just to remind him of home and also yeah. overloaded with a lot of sugar. So I feel like. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. If I may, so are you a triple triple guy? 
<laughs> Maybe just triple, uh, leave the other triple out. I feel like Winslow's like a cowboy coffee kind of guy. Or at least Winslow's father is, uh, like, Pa is a fucking cowboy coffee kind of guy. And he's like, oh, Winslow, have this. And he gives it. And Winslow's cup has, like, a bunch of fucking gross-ass coffee grinds in it. And he's like, yeah. oh, that, I'm not actually a fan of this. I will actually pass. <laughs> yep, yep. It's just but so But then, gross. like, once you, like, when, once that school and stuff, it's like, ah, oh, this just reminds me of home. And everyone's like, how are you drinking that? <laughs> Like, oh, shit, Kurt sucks. would love this. Kurt, <laughs> Kurt's unconscious, uh, face down. Just uh, great orders. I expect them uh, soon. Please hurry up. Coffee Ten minutes. Vendors. Uh, but thank you for that one. On to the next, which is my also next question from... is from the same person, not not <gasps> Lazari, Lazari, Lazarus. <laughs> um, there was no. If what? you had to change the class of your characters to something totally different, what would it be? For Luke, what's your favorite class and why? Integrity would like to be a fucking barbarian or a fighter. <laughs> oh, so yeah. Super fucking strong without I having to that. rely on um, advantage sneak or sneak attack <laughs> or having someone close to her. She just wants to fight and kill and hit hard. I have a question. Jesus. If Sarah yeah. becomes a ranger, can she get a saddle and ride Virgil into battle? Uh, no. Damn Next that. question. No. <laughs> Winsler is an artificer, obviously. 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 Obvious change. Probably sorcerer for Mira. Oh, interesting. Ooh. Well, she already has a little bit of meta magic, right? Yeah. Like. I could see her like there's uh, there's a version of her that I could see like a divine soul sorcerer or something Ooh. like that with like the Shiora connection. That's, Ooh. Cool. Ooh. That's pretty sick. You become a sorcerer when you get the cursed tattoo wrapped on your arm from the Yeah. Trailer. That's a good sorcerer's origin. You can use that for your backstory. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um I think for Sarenath, because we've now been told that I can't be a ranger. Um <laughs> You could be a ranger, you just can't have a saddle. <laughs> Damn it. Um okay, no, but actually I've thought about it a couple of times. Now, mind you, again, I don't have full knowledge on all the different classes and stuff. Mm -hmm. I just think it'd be kind of cool to... What the fuck? Kind of cool to be a paladin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that tracks. Righteous ass. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Righteous ass. (laughs) That's how you you insult Serenath in this this situation. Uh, My favorite class is um, probably fighter because I'm like basic bitch uh <laughs> second to that would probably be monk my my white monks male, are great true love yes um, <laughs> monks my beloved my beloved <laughs> monk uh thank you for the question not not lazari or lazarus or lazari or however carla all the permutations carla said <laughs> thank uh, you i like next. the word permutation thank you same it's good so the next question we have from Taro. How quickly into <laughs> his trip did Artis get a sunburn? Immediately. Like, immediately. <laughs> he got sunburned before yeah. he even went through the full... <laughs> <laughs> Bro totally showed up to the bridge fort with like the full zinc get up on like his cheeks, like the you know, oh. like the yellow ass paste. Uh, uh, mm. He is probably currently uh, the shade of uh, you know your heart, you know, dark, oh. deep red, uh, mm. burnt beyond recognition. You, none of you would recognize him anymore. He's a different. He looks like a tiefling now. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lobster of a man. That's a that's a horrifying sunburn. Oh my yeah, goodness. His, his skin's just uh, sloughing off in sheets at this point. Ugh. Oh, the poor guy. They're, he's going to get there. They're like, okay, you need to like, you need to bathe in this medicine for hours just to heal oh, you. Just buddy. to heal Ugh. you. Like Bacta. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Taro, for the Spicy question. Spicy question. Uh, thank you, Taro. Up next, rat. For Luke, I don't know if you'll ever do a camp, blah, 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 but if you ever do, or even just as a thought experiment, what's some of the most useful things that you've learned throughout the years of this campaign that can help with long-form runs? Uh, splitting stuff up into arcs is great. Having like a different kind of focus for those arcs, or uh, I dare even say gimmicks for the arcs is fantastic. It keeps it fresh for you as the Dungeon Master. The most important thing, I think, is keeping the game uh, fresh and keep it moving faster uh, than what you've seen happening here. I'm a slug of a Dungeon Master. I take very long to get around to things or to have ideas actualized. Uh, and part of that is by because I run the campaign in one hour chunks. Uh, I feel like if you run a campaign in bigger chunks than just one hour, you'll be much more uh, prepared and prepping stuff further ahead. Uh, uh, that was my recommendation. Also, just have fun with it. You know, let go, let loose a little. It, uh, 
if you're going to run a game that's five years fucking long, throw it out there. Even if you feel like an idea is not ready, just to, or like if you're like, oh, I don't want to waste this idea, just use that idea, right? There's no wasting ideas. You could always redo something with different coat of paint later, uh, not mm-hmm. probably in the same campaign. Uh, learn from my mistakes of cylinders and C's. Uh, but, you know, uh, <laughs> don't be afraid to use the ideas in your head. You're uh, always improving. And I think that's like a big thing to remember is that you're going to be a different dungeon master from the start of that adventure to the very end of that adventure uh, you're going to learn a lot of first-hand lessons that it's very hard for me to sit for any other dun- for any dungeon master to sit and say this is the stuff you're going to run through and this is what you're going to experience uh it is the easiest possible thing to just start running the game and learning those lessons for yourself because you're going to have your own unique style that's very different from how i run the game and very different from how most other people run the game mm-hmm. also don't be afraid to take it slow Right. That's a home, if, especially if it's a home game. Uh, sometimes that's fine. Yeah. Thank you for the question, though. I appreciate it. A lot of good insights Thank there. You. All right. Next question is from Praise Glove. <laughs> it is, what's your favorite TTRPG that you've ever played Ooh. and why? That's a good one. That's hard. Um, I really like Tales from the Loop. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I really, I don't know if it was like really liking this dice pool system or just like liking the setting or probably a combination thereof. I also uh, really love The Quiet Year, which mm-hmm. we haven't played here, but it's a really fun like yes. kind of community like slash town building game that can allow for lots of really cool stuff to happen. I also want to give a shout out to a game I got to play with my friends like about a week ago called Alice is Missing. Mm-hmm. This ah. is one where, uh, so you play it like sitting in the same room as your friends and it takes place entirely via text messages. So you change your uh, name and your contacts to your character's name and then you're texting each other as you are trying to solve the disappearance of mm-hmm. this uh, girl who you knew who went missing and was perhaps abducted, maybe ran away, who knows, at... um over the course of 90 minutes. It's a very intense experience. It's really cool and fun. Uh, really yeah. good experience. Highly recommend it. So one of those three probably. I also just really like D&D 5e. It's, yeah. it's a good mm-hmm. game. I like it. I've only ever heard great things about that game, by the way. Like every single person I know who's played it has been like, oh, it was fantastic. Oh, um, it was really cool. Yes. I actually have to type. <laughs> yeah, you uh, instead of speaking out loud, you are texting to each other. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I want to that. I'm so lazy. <laughs> and then you Bro. like, re- and then you're like recording like voicemails on your phone, and there's lots That's of cool stuff cool. like that. It it's really well. cool. It's very fun. immersive. Uh, the obvious. I like fifth edition. I also, people might not know this about me. I really like fourth edition. I've been revisiting fourth edition. Uh, Player's Handbook, Monster DM's Guide. That shit. Oh, it just hits different, my guys. <laughs> um, beyond that, I really like the Genesis system. Uh, which is a fun, uh, it doesn't use actual numbers. It uses advantage dis- or threats, uh, successes, uh, stuff like that. There's a bunch of different uh, rules associated with it. I've found that it's a very uh, lush game for just improvising stuff. And it puts into the player's hands a lot of the power of improvising why something has gone bad in a single moment that I feel like I've never been able to capture in any other game. So I'd recommend the Genesis uh, role-playing system, uh, specifically the, the like Edge of the Empire. If you can f- find that or find a PDF for it and run it with your friends, it's a blast. Uh, it uses a bunch of dingle-dongle little weird dice, proprietary <laughs> dice, but you can you can hack it with just your normal <laughs> polyhedrals. Uh, and I would firmly recommend playing it. It's a blast. I would be lying if I said that 5th edition was not my favorite TCRPG, but if we're excluding that... Um, it would probably be, I really do like Tales of the Loop. Tales of the Loop was mm. really fun when we did it. I really like the rules set for that. Wander Home yeah. was also good. Mm. Uh, but if I think I had to pick a favorite, I probably would pick Tales from the Loop. Yeah, it's mm. really good. Yeah. It would be Tales from the Loop and then Wander Home and then Call of Cthulhu like right after that. Those are those oh, are like I really, really good. I forgot about Call of Cthulhu. I really like Call of Cthulhu. <laughs> I think it's a really fun game to run because you get to damage your players and uh, everyone's very <laughs> fragile. And also, here's my recommendation to the last question, but for Call of Cthulhu, kill your characters. Kill them. Just do it. Take them out. Just kill them. Um. Yeah, I think... Uh, I'm very stuck on if it would be because I love Wander Home. I love like yeah. the the nature As of expected. that game. Just kind of yeah, like like you guys know I love Wander, Wander yeah. Home already. You seem like a person um, who like Wander Home, Sam. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the fuck does that mean? <laughs> but I but I do You're also very cottagecore. Thank you. <laughs> but I do also really enjoy Call of Cthulhu. Like that yeah. that is so fun. But yeah, Wander Home just has like a special place in my That's heart. Something else. Yeah, I would say. 
that it depends on the mood. Um, mm. Tales from the Loop is like very reminiscent of real life because you know it's mm. like a real country. Um, so it's, like it's so crazy grounded. if Sweden was real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're crazy. Like it's very easy to immerse yourself as a, like as yourself and really feel the fear that these characters are feeling um in in that kind of dystopian future. Uh and sometimes I like that, but then sometimes I like having the ability to escape and just frolic in the world and that's where wander home um hits home mm. i really like both of those easy to say that they're my favorites yeah. D is a fun game but again it's a lot of reading i like <laughs> <laughs> you like rules. it like... all comes back down to me hating reading i don't <sighs> hate reading necessarily but I can easily read a book, but then me remembering what I just read is not always the best. My recall is not very great. So that that's my answer. Tales from mm-hmm. the Loop and Wander Home. Good choices. Mm-hmm. Good answers. And I don't know anything else because I don't really play any other TTRPGs apart from the ones that you see me play with my friends. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Oh, it's my turn? Yeah, yeah. that's why. Thank you, you for the question, by the way. It was Thank very you good for the question. question. Thank you for the question. Really that that was fun to answer. Um, next one is from a person named Blossoming Desire. <laughs> if all of you, yourself, for your characters, you can include characters from the other RPGs you've played for the podcast, how to choose a plant or a flower to represent yourselves, what will you choose and why? Hmm. I don't know any plants. But I Sarah, don't I don't know what Mira would be. Winsler is Winsler is aloe. <laughs> I think that's fucking, I think Winslow being Aloe is fucking proper. He's a little short stout. He's hard to get rid of, hard to kill sometimes. Uh, filled with Unless water, you know. Uh, filled with, with water. water. <laughs> filled with like Slimy weird Slimy in the core. <laughs> Slimy in the core, but can help you with sunburns. True. I think that, I'm going to be, I'm going to use uh, family names for a moment here. I think Serenath would be something in Ranunculus, a buttercup of some sort, because they're very, uh, they're just very plain. There's not much to them. They're very uncomplicated. Uh, and it's very, like, uh, I think Serenath has, like, everything. That you, I think Winsler also fits that kid still, but I think Winsler as an owl plant is way funnier. Uh, but I think Serenath is very much like a uh, what you see is what you get kind of person, mm-hmm. um, it, both for good and for bad, right? And that we've seen that over the course of the, the podcast. I think Integrity I Idleberry would be, hmm. An aster? No, I don't. Uh, I think uh, Mira Marchand be would be aster. okay. Then you can be an aster. But I'm okay. Fine. Turn. I think Mira Marchand. Sorry, Sarah, but I think you would be a cult. She would be like a cultivate a cultivar rose, like one of the ones that has too many petals uh, and is just completely like uh, ornamental, very like uh, flashy, very like. Um, Oh, yeah, absolutely. Very well known. Like everyone, if you think a rose, you would know exactly what to imagine, right? Like uh, someone who, uh, just a rose. Just imagine a rose. It's just like a typical rose, like with all the petals. Um, Yeah, I I see it. Yeah. I I, I think that makes sense for Mira Marchand. And I don't know for Integrity I I Ileberry, honestly. There's a part of me that wants a fig. (laughs) A fig? (laughs) I want to be, I want to be those ones that grow in the forest that are like, um, like swirlies, you know. The, yeah. You, you know the one that that looks like oh. Jack and the Beanstalk. Are you talking about easy like to trample? Or am I missing like something? Like a fern, like a fiddle, fern with fiddleheads. Yeah, a fiddle. Ah, fern. fiddlehead. Well, like, it's not a fiddlehead. Fiddle it's just a, a stage fiddle of growth. Head. Because it's easy to trample, but we are endless. <laughs> <laughs> you can Boo trample, is a bramble me, bush. but you will always Boo find me somewhere. Boo is a bramble bush. Boo is a bramble bush. Boo is a bramble bush. <laughs> Boo is a bramble bush. <laughs> Uh, and my NPC that I'm going to choose for this is Penny Royal. Penny Royal is a Penny Royal because she's a toxic. Wow! Because she's toxic. Yeah. Uh, That's a wonderful question. Thank you so much. I guess. Oh, sorry. I just kind of said everything and then we moved on. I don't know if you guys. <laughs> You're the botanist. <laughs> Those are. Pretty I just basic want a thorny answers, plant. Yeah. Uh, fantastic question. Nerd. <laughs> 
Uh, the next question we have... Oh, look, a bird flew in again. Okay, it's telling me, <laughs> if you were to build a character sheet for yourself, what race and class would you be, and what stats would you have? Maxed out charisma, maxed out strength, maxed out dexterity, maxed out constitution, maxed out... Okay. No oh, you're one of no those dice rollers, got it. <laughs> right. Is that ever possible? <laughs> no, that's not true. No. I would have very high strength. I think I have moderate to high moderate charisma at the very least i'd have very low dexterity i'd have very high constitution because nothing can kill me from the from uh, nothing can kill me nothing <laughs> that i can eat can kill me um and then the others i don't know i've been told uh, i would be a ranger in the past mm. when i've explained people plants for mm -hmm. very many hours in the woods i feel I like i would have m like metal con i would have low wisdom low intelligence no low strength, low <laughs> 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 Middle charisma. <laughs> um, what am Bro, I missing? You're, you're oozing charisma dexterity. and intelligence. I think your dexterity is dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I have great dexterity. If you say so, yeah. Well, yeah, I might agree. Your writing okay. looks like a fucking maybe, typewriter. Maybe I have mid dexterity. Um, <laughs> fine. I will say that maybe I'm a little bit more charismatic than others, <laughs> but I feel like everything else is pretty middle to low. I think I, when it comes to like strength and dexterity, pfft, not, it's <laughs> no. fucking not there. <laughs> Constitution, maybe a little bit higher, but still pretty low because like, I, I'm, there's just so many things wrong with me. Anyway, <laughs> um... <laughs> My medical, my medical mm -hmm. papers are all just a fucking book. Um, uh, I think at the very least I am like, like intelligence and wisdom, whichever one is like, whichever one would, would go into like basic like logic stuff. Yeah. I think that would be above average because I know I tend to overanalyze a lot of things. So, and I think charisma would be like low mid Damn. Something like that. I also I took a to quiz literally yesterday. Oh, oh did you? is it like that oh, yeah. big quiz where you answer like ten like of a bunch course. of questions? It's fucking <laughs> yeah. slime. So I took a I literally took a quiz yesterday mm -hmm. about this. So I can tell you that the quiz gave me yes. 17 int, 15 charisma, 12 wisdom, eleven dex, ten con, and eight strength. So I should probably be like a wizard or a bard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've always said, because uh, my partner and I are fucking D&D &D nerds, and I'm like, no. oh, you would be a paladin, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, I, the belief is that I would be a bard, uh, specifically College of Eloquence, where no. they're literally like fucking just debaters, but what? as bards. Saying I know, so. shocking, right? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> what class... I don't think I said... What class... I don't know what class I would be, though. What would my class you be, You would guys? be a druid. Yeah. Easy. Oh. Done. Yeah. Settled. Yeah. Can I be a cleric? We got... Am I a cleric? Yeah, you'd be a... Dude, you're literally a cleric, like I in real yeah. life, bro. You are actually you're a cleric. You're a actually, healer. You're a literally healer. a cleric. I don't heal. You're a fucking I, you're a heal bot. I I I am just anxious all day trying not to kill people. I don't uh, heal. Just like a cleric. Yeah, yeah, just like, yeah that's a cleric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ben. think I am pretty average all around, but I would say my wisdom score is probably my highest score. I would say yeah. oh, you're intelligent too. Yeah, well, you intelligence is a little level. higher than uh, average, but, but I wouldn't ben, say it's, like, ben, insane. You read books and then just memorize the entire book and then recite the book, um, and then you don't have to touch the book again for the next 10 years. I would say <laughs> that's quite intelligent. Uh, or okay. at least you have keen mind or something I would like say that. that I could be a wizard for sure, because who else wants to read books? I will. I'll read the book. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will look through absorb. all these options that Luke may not be able to. That's do. pretty good. Um, party comp, isn't it? Cleric, ranger, uh, druid, bard, wizard. Sure, that's pretty we're good. A bit yeah, lacking yeah. in the physical department. Ah, uh, who you know. cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. For good the thing we're going to a magic school. Yes. Thank you. Who's this? Oh, one? I shall ask this wizard. question because I haven't. An, I haven't said asked one in a while. Questions in a while. This question is from. Billigator. 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 <laughs> how did you guys notice most of the episodes of the Birds of a Feather arc are named after birds? Convenient how that lined up, eh? Gee. Yeah, that's a strange coincidence, you know? Like, Such a coincidence. Wow. I put say. most of the things that are just statements as like general questions. Yeah. Um, 
we yeah thanks to nathan for naming the ark birds of a feather thanks to everyone for coming up with fun uh, uh bird related <laughs> idioms and sayings every single week to because we really yes. sometimes sometimes i look back and i'm like we should have really capitalized on that like with fucking a hell of a deal why did we not have 22 episodes straight of just gambling idioms and yeah. jokes um, really a missed opportunity. Uh, it's a shame. Uh, but yes, uh, I, I, I did actually notice that all of them are bird related. And did you notice that most of the characters are bird, have bird names? That's fun. Really? What? Wow. Whoa. Um, this one is from Hadley. Oh and God. the question is, how has making this <laughs> podcast last almost five years impacted your lives, both <laughs> tangible and personally? Yikes. <laughs> well, I barely sleep on Tuesdays for chronically for five years. Um, that's a pretty big impact on my life. I was just going to say that I like hanging out with you guys. <laughs> yeah, like, it's nice to have like, because I feel like if it's not like a scheduled time to meet up, which is a weird thing to say that like, I don't know, we don't get, we don't really, we don't all talk too much. No, so it's nice sense. to have like a, Hey, on this day at this time, come meet with us. And then for the first 30 minutes of that thing, we're supposed to be doing something else. We're going to talk about our lives. How are y'all doing? <laughs> I think that's yeah, like that's the appeal of D and D, right? Like yeah. you get to like oh, you're yeah. like, oh, we're gonna I'm gonna schedule a meeting with all of my friends and we're all gonna be there. And presumably exactly. if we're in prison, we're gonna have snacks, which is gonna be great. But since yes. we're all fucking in the virtual space, except for this episode, of of course. Um oh, yes. we don't get to fucking share food, which is the worst part of it. Um yeah. in a time of like, you know, being a being adults. Um, where life takes you in different directions and, you know, mm-hmm. different priorities. It's always like that coming up with a plan. Like you have to make time to actually get mm-hmm. to hang out with people. Um, and playing D&D and like playing this hobby that we have allows us and grants us that. And... Mm-hmm that's how we've stayed friends in yeah. mm-hmm. the last five years as well. Because it's very yeah. easy to drift mm-hmm. apart mm-hmm. after, you know, like after graduating university. Yeah. Like my friends that I made in university, because I didn't go to school with them, like with with us. The us four of the them. Um, like it was easy to drift apart with my college friends. But here they are who are their college friends and they're still together and still talking so yeah i'm excited to see most of y'all for the wedding yo i'm so excited you might not know this audience but other than this obviously in person recording uh most of the cast some of the cast members hadn't met until last year in real life and it's true none of us have ever been in the same place all at once and we i don't think mm-hmm. still other than this episode mm-hmm. still <laughs> w- w- will not be but uh most of us will be there i think uh yeah. which is gonna be a hoot um another thing about the podcast is we've been making it for so long and we have a wonderful community and it's uh really cool to have like uh at least set a distance gotten to like meet so many people or like people who say like hey i started running a game because of you guys or like i want to do a magical school thing or like yada 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 or all the people who make art or the people who've like genuinely become like close friends and it's like oh you only exist because or not you only exist because of this (laughs) (laughs) i only know you or like these relationships only exist because we decided on a donut filled whim to make a podcast um and keep it going for so long and that's like a, a, a joyous little thing like uh, those little strings of coincidences where if this hadn't happened and that hadn't happened and this hadn't happened there's so many people in your life that you wouldn't know and uh to have made a door of for ourselves to have this kind of path through the past five years that we have at least in connotation of the podcast is 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 pretty magical of its own re- accord if i can't be s- sappy enough to say that <laughs> mm-hmm just fond of the podcast because it's <laughs> I'm just so fond of it I don't know like it started out when we were in university and now we're still doing it all those years yeah. later it's like, a treasure yeah. thing do you guys think about these mailbag episodes that we do every single year? It's almost like that Billie Eilish uh, Vanity Fair interview where they ask her the same questions year after year after year and you get to see how <laughs> she changes and grows up. I feel like that's like the mailbag to some sort. It's like, kind of like listen, the mailbag, yeah. You could listen yeah, to all like five that. of the mailbags and be like, oh, this is the arc that these people have kind of taken as as humans and how they've changed. Each each mm-hmm. mailbag is a I different love that. arc. That's very yeah. weird. Mm-hmm. I Strange. like that, though. That's a good way of thinking about it. Don't psychoanalyze our lives, guys. Please. <laughs> no, you're thr- 
<laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's interesting, you. like, to have this, yeah. I guess, recorded... Record of it. Yeah, yeah. like, to show, like, mm-hmm. hey, here's all of us still hanging out, but, you know, here's how we've changed as individuals a little bit. You I know? am approaching yeah. my 30s. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> I am 26. No! I'm only 25. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm in the prime of my youth. Year. God damn it. <laughs> Strong as fuck. Stronger than I ever been. <laughs> Carla, I'm okay. stressing out, y'all. Why are Carla, we talking Carla, about it? Are you okay? All right, all right, all right. Uh, Great question. Thank you so much. On Thank to the next. you. On to the next question. <laughs> Carla, come okay, on. I'm sorry. It's Stop having turn. a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm always oh having a crisis, okay? This is such a hard Oceanic. Word. Oceanic asked me a question. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the next question is from Oceanic, like the ocean, with an ick. Um... <laughs> What has been your favorite mystery to solve? God. A to get answers for during the campaign. For Luke, which of these mysteries have been the most fun to plant the seeds for and see both audience and players speculate over and then reveal? Henrietta had Hen- no existed. Yes. Yes. Henrietta. Absolutely Hen- Henrietta. Shivers down my Agreed. spine. I really liked that whole arc like yeah. a lot. That was that was, was very good. That shit was set up since. Well, I, mean, I already had an idea of like there's the three founders. I fun fact didn't name any of the founders before we started mm. playing the podcast. Listen to me, folks. You do not need to have the answer to every question of your world setting before you start. <laughs> uh, and then whiteout. I was like, what's what name one of the founders as a history question? And Sam was like, uh, or Sam was like, uh, Henrietta Hedrick, a B, right? And I was like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna take that and run with it, right? Like explain why is her name Henrietta Hedrick that doesn't follow Dragon Ball conventions and that tells a lot about her character and impacts why she's here and what the wild cl- and it's just like a whole it like answers so many wonderful questions about the show and sets up a lot of great implications about the setting uh by far and away Henrietta Hedrick's mysterious existence the moment I heard her name again I was like <gasps> That's the thing. That's what, Yo! That's is- what you're always searching for as a DM. You're waiting for your characters to be like, wait a second. I know that. It's a great <laughs> feeling. <laughs> no, but that was honestly, yeah, that's my answer as well. Henrietta Hedrick was like such a good like little thing to like, just then mm-hmm. fucking kill our friend. You know? Yeah. Just, wow. Yeah. That's my favorite one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, Hen- the Henrietta Hedrick one is like <laughs> the well, best. Listen, it's hard. It's hard to come up with something when that's already the top. I mean, yeah. I did also enjoy, like, oh, okay. you know, Ferdinand, her, that whole storyline yeah. also was very That was fun. a good one. I liked Fred. The f- Why the fuck is this dude so fucking obsessed with Serenapth? Yeah. Uh, why that, was, so that, was, that entire so thing was like, whoa, what? The, royal, the reason the why the royal family is doing what they're doing and everything, that was yeah. good. That's neat. It was a That's good neat. one. It's okay. It's oh, all right. Time. It's all right. <laughs> By far and away, Henry and Hedrick, we all agree. We all know. Yes. Uh, so, oh, yeah. is, is that yours as yes, well? Yes, it is. Oh, okay. Chill. <laughs> um, well, that's a perfect wrap for the next question that I have. It's from someone named Dot. Hey, Dot, your question is this. What would Swim's classes be in a space opera or other sci-fi mm. context? For Luke, how would someone like Nesca or the Prague fit into that sci-fi world? Well, I don't know enough about the the convention of space operas to really answer this. Unfortunately, oh, I'm not like a big sci-fi space opera or type person. Other sci-fi context, like I'm trying to think, because only my only sci-fi context would be like I think Stargate SG One or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think I this know. would be like a hacker, like a computer yeah? whiz, like technology Ooh. man. Uh, I think integrity would black fulfill market a, hacker fulfill a similar <laughs> role. I want to um, be an assassin. Yeah, I feel like that. Fits really Bounty good. hunter. Or yeah. ooh, a bounty hunter, or I'm like that person who's like, I'm your friend, but actually, I'm not. It's like in Star what? Wars. Yeah. Um, what's his face? Uh, like the guy mm-hmm. in yeah. like the Lando? space. Lando? Lando, yeah. Lando, not Lando yeah. Norris. Lando uh, <laughs> Calrissian. I think Sarah, not Sarah. I think Mira would be an excellent, like, uh, kind of charming debonair ship captain. Uh, oh yeah, I feel like that fits, and like having a crew assembled, like again, as like a Mira's coming to Rona as like a leader, a charismatic leader, not in that sense, but yeah. the other sense. Uh, I think that that's like Mira as a ship captain, so like on I like that. the outer rim is like 
simple, sick. Serenap as the runaway uh, princess. Who, like, yeah, I, that's uh, just that, like that always appears in like 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 I'm just like the person who's like hiding in the cargo bay or something like mm-hmm. that, and then like I can be useful and let's like let, I don't know fight the empire. As for Nesca sci-fi setting, I think that she would still be a giant serpent, except she would have hatched out of like a moon or something and a super cool cataclysmic. Fuck yeah! Whoa. Like I'm imagining, I, I don't know why I'm imagining like every moon has a like, dragon. It hatches yes. and it's like a ring, like the rings of Saturn, but it's fucking Nesca. That's sick as fuck. That's sick as fuck. So fucking uh, cool. damn. Thanks for the question, Dot. Uh, Thank you. The next one is from Nat. What was the significance of the necromancer's headdresses in the council meeting? Oh, I've yeah. always wondered if there was a reason for the varied lengths and gemstones being described in such detail, or if it was just an aesthetic. Uh, egg on my face, because I said I was going to prepare this, and then I literally, or I was going to go find my notes on this, and then I, like a dumb bitch, literally didn't go Forgot. find my notes. Um, the same so, way that uh, we I'm so sorry, everyone. Oh. Um, our guesses. My guess is that it's um, a communication device <laughs> or a hive mind. My notes are poor. Uh, yes, all of those different, uh, like the cinnabar and emeralds, uh, amethyst and uh, cerulite, uh, those did have specific connotations and meanings. Like it's more of like a, it's almost like a um, abstract of who the person is and what their like path through being a necromancer has been. So like your Ooh. headdress might be comprised of certain metals that are associated with uh, certain rites and rituals. Uh, emeralds and amethysts might be associated, or, or specifically diamonds might be someone who is like, uh, uh, very revered within the community uh, is very high up in their standing, right? The diamonds in like spellcasting components is associated with specifically like bringing people back from the dead, which we know is a very big topic within the nec- necromancer society. Uh, I-, I believe I was thinking of something like amethyst and cerulite, things that are j- bluer gemstones, purpler gemstones on the cool tones being associated with people who are uh, in deep grief or grieving at some point in their lives, right? I- the entire essence of it was just that they were supposed to be kind of like demonstrative of different people's uh, either similarities or disparate differences uh, on like a first glance kind of thing. Uh, Just like representative of like, what have you studied? What has your path to this position been? Uh, And and I really liked that. And uh, the the congregation of necromancers gathered is like one of my favorite little uh, weird bits of the, like a very minor uh, organization that showed up once. I just really enjoyed that uh, all that time ago. I really like that. Thank you for asking. It's really cool. Thank you. Next up. Ben. This is me. It's another question from Oceanic. Mm. What about role playing do you guys find the most Oof. difficult? What tips or things to thunk think about <laughs> do you find works to improve at role playing? That's a typo in there. No, I don't think it is. <laughs> I've transcribed these perfectly. Lose mm. your shit. I think the most difficult thing for role playing for me is finding the right time to sort of jump in and say something that I want to say, right? Because I don't mm. want to be the one to interrupt a important character moment with what yeah. that some other person might be having with an NPC. But also it's like, there's this is like a really important thing that I might want to do in this one scene. And if it doesn't happen, then yeah, it's not, then it's not going to happen for Absolutely. again. Right. So that's always going to be like a difficult thing for me personally. I don't know about anyone 100%. else. Yeah. I feel like I always need to make sure that scenes I'm in don't like meander. Mm -hmm. Like it's good not just to have the characters talk, just to have them talk, especially if we're making something for an audience. Not that there can't be small talk in a role playing scene, but I like to have a specific goal or something that I want to get out in the conversation in mind when I'm having it. And sometimes if I don't know what that goal is or I don't know where I'm thinking this is going to go next, it can be uh, a little bit stressful and I feel can make scenes go on a little too long, at least on my part mm-hmm. so that's a little bit challenging for me sometimes i agree as a dm as a dm uh, there, uh, like similar to what ben said is like i used to very much fall into this trap of like oh i have this exact thing and i'm gonna wait for the precise perfect uh, moment i've calculated exactly where it should enter it and then it would just never that would never happen right because uh, i was it was way too inflexible uh, so like flexibility in role playing is one of the biggest things and being able to adapt to like where the conversation is going, what's happening and like listening and hearing what everyone is saying and kind of like mm. reacting to that is is like paramount, especially as a DM 
you need to be listening very intently to what people are saying and what people are not just like the words they are saying, what they are trying to convey. And that like that directs where the scene is going, that directs intention, et cetera. Intention is like key understanding what people want out of something. Mm -hmm. Um, And and in like a home game or something like that, or even in this game, stopping and being like, hey, what precisely do you want out of this? Or what are you looking Mm -hmm. to get? Is like a very easy way to go through that. And like actually acting it out is, it can be tougher, but also I find very rewarding when you can like act out a full conversation without having to like uh, step out and have like a meta moment. Um, Mm -hmm. I also find as a player, I I, I am very um, terrible and I'm sure a terrible player to have at your table because I love wasting time and just talking and making a lot of jokes and like, again, just (laughs) wasting everyone's time uh, (laughs) because uh, I want to make funny jokes. Uh, It's all my Dungeon Masters out there. I apologize. Yes, Sam. I'll give you an example of what I do generally when I want to say something in in a role-playing situation, which is I will raise my hand like a child in kindergarten because in the past I haven't and then I've accidentally interrupted someone else and I want to not do that because I feel horrible when it happens. Yeah. So I, I just generally will just like start doing that because it at least lets me know, hey, now you can like you waited your you, you waited mm-hmm. the time. Now you can say the thing and not worry about no one knowing that you wanted to say yeah. something at that point. Mm-hmm. Of course, at some point, if you do it too much, you definitely have to kind of think of like, OK, in this moment that's happening, do you really need to say like that's what I think generally is like, mm-hmm. do I really need to say something right now or can I let or they can just because again, like what you mentioned, wanting to make a joke, wanting to. Yeah. I don't know what's the shoot the shit is that yeah yeah absolutely I think like yeah that's a different way different in a podcast versus like a home game right like that takes a completely different form depending on your table and the setup and everything so it's like yeah yeah, like I like you guys already all talked about the difficulties of role playing and I totally um like understand it or like relate to it Mm -hmm. so I guess for me then the tips that i think tips and um, tricks and tricks that i think are useful is to be adaptable Mm -hmm. sometimes like you like i find this often for myself that i someone says something and there's like something that comes up in my in my mind where i'm like this is so funny if i say this or if i do this (laughs) um but then like i try to like hold myself to see if like there's anything then that I can add in the conversation that's happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just like rolling with the punches, like going with the flow, because I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, you'll get to where you have to be faster. And not yeah. faster is not always like best. Um, sometimes like taking things slow is okay as well. Um, but as players, like you have to know that sometimes it's your goals that will um, prevail or Mm -hmm. someone else's um, goals will prevail. And it is up to you to really know when to take the reins and Mm -hmm. when to let people go. Let let people people have their moment. Yeah. And that's Mm -hmm. when you have to be like adaptable. Yeah. It's like respect in terms of playing the game. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Everyone yeah. should have their moment. Everyone has should have a moment in the spotlight. Uh, another thing that you should keep in mind, or as a this is a dungeon master thing, but also a player thing, uh, y- you can tr- you should try. I think to make most conversations meaningful in mm-hmm. the long run. I think that goes to. It's kind of hard, especially if you used to me like me wasting a lot of fucking time. Uh, but I think in the long run, making every conversation meaningful and let it move forward some sort of timer or clock or plot, uh, that is like the most productive stuff possible. Like if you're having yeah. the same conversation time after time after time before something actually happens, that can get frustrating. That can be get old fast, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for the wonderful yeah. question, though. Oshana. Thank you, uh, Kate Lestial. Let me answer. Yeah, let me ask you a question. How does human Nesca fit a four-inch diameter orb into her forehead? Only a part of the surface actually is like visible on the front, and the rest of the socket is like you know displacing her 
huge intelligent brain inside i thought the orb was her brain no <laughs> i genuinely thought that as well at one point Shout out like to oh yeah just episodes when you guys were like oh my god the orb is teb's other eye and i was like no he only he only has the one guys he only has he never had a second one there's we need to give him he? a second eye <laughs> There's definitely a point in time where there's a lot of confusion about how big is the orb because Yo, the amount of times four that, inch that diameter integrity, orb is how big, big is a four inch it's diameter so sphere? That's too big. Every time that every time that integrity would put the orb four in inches. her boot and be like, no one can see it. Like, are you sure? Luke was even talking to me and well, everything. Well, yeah, it's flat. And I was just like, I oh, yeah, hate right, right. radius in the D and D sort of fucking environment because it implies a circle. Yeah, Ben confused radius um, for diameter for a moment when we were having a conversation, and he was like, "Oh, this spell fucking sucks. It only targets one person." I was like, "Bro, bro it's 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 like a radius. It's like a circle." And then uh, we and then we learned no, it actually is just a shitty spell. It only targets <laughs> one person because it affects yeah, a cube. That's specifically create Damn. bonfire because it's so a cube. fucking stupid. But you, why can't spell. you make giant it. bonfires? Why won't the game let us make giant? It's really bonfires. bullshit. You know? So. Stupid. How about someone else read this next one? I shall read this one. This question is from Nathan, but spooky. <laughs> what a familiar <laughs> name. You, very similar to the name of someone else that I know. <laughs> Do you spooky. have any advice for first time or new D&D players and or any advice you wish you'd known before playing the game? Mm. Ooh. If you don't understand what something is on your character sheet, just ask. Ask a question. Yes. And yeah. don't be afraid to do something silly yeah Yeah. always the two big ones yeah it's good to take risks sometimes because risk is where the fun of DD really comes from you know is where the reward comes from yes make brave and heroic (laughs) if you're playing a heroic game decisions Mm. and your light the boons will flow into your lap and you also might die which is one of the most fun things that can happen in DD and always be sure? flexible with your character too. They don't have to be like, mm-hmm. yeah, cut in stone. Like I won't do this because it's not what my character would do. Just you know, just find a reason. Yeah. Also, make yeah. someone who wants to be in the party. That was literally going to be. I had two. Yeah. That yeah. was going to be the first one I was going to say. Is it's like, so important. if it feels as though like the game has to work around you being in the party. It just becomes like for one, like even if the character does sort of eventually settle into a rhythm, there's Mm -hmm. only really one direction that that like character arc can go. So it's not the most interesting. And it also just creates, I think like unnecessary friction when Mm -hmm. there's like much more fun types of friction that can originate from play. Like having a character who both wants to be in a party, but also like wants to do the adventure just like makes things flow a lot better. And another one is like, just like don't be afraid to communicate mm-hmm. with like the other players mm-hmm. and with your DM if you are not the DM. Like if there is something that you want to see like done differently, yes. if there are certain plot beats you think like you didn't um initially intend on but that you thought could be really fun to explore with mm-hmm. your character, that sort of thing. And I guess like t- uh, tangential to that is like be with and in a party that you feel comfortable communicating yes, with. Because oh, yes. if you feel like you have a DM that you can't tell if you don't like something or if you want to try something new or you have a party that you wouldn't feel comfortable like using safety tools around, yep. that may be an indicator that it may be a good idea to find a different group of people 100%. to play with, you know, people that you trust. Yeah, 100%. It's so important because we're being so vulnerable, or at least the way we yes. play. Like, you're so vulnerable. Yeah. And if you're playing at a table where someone betrays that kind of like social trust like that implicit Mm -hmm. kind of like social contract it's just like the most dog shit like experience on earth so like yeah just find a table that's good for you there is one out there right Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. if you find a deck of many things (laughs) (laughs) you either have to get consent from everybody at that table that everyone's gonna pull a card or you don't fuck with it. We the two times that we have gotten one of those disaster, just disaster continued forward. It's I know fine. it looks cool. There's rewards in there, but as far as the eye can see, don't risk, do it. Risk don't is where it. reward lives. More risk, oh, more reward. Also, where the black cards, hole will take you. To it'll hell. be fine. You'll get some wishes. You won't die. Yeah, um. like you'll find a cool new like night companion that protects you. But then also <laughs> one of your friends will like just die. Uh, also, if you're a dungeon master, no, sorry. If you're a player and you've only ever been a player, go dungeon master. Do a four session campaign 
nothing more, nothing less. And you will learn so much about the game and you will learn how to play the game better. And you will have your eyes, the wool pulled away from your eyes. I am firm four sessions minimum. Minimum, minimum, uh, minimum, minimum, and you will learn. And also, it's four sessions is not that big of a commitment. That can be like two, a, a single dungeon that you just go through if you are scared of doing anything else. That can be like a couple encounters. You can do it. It's not that hard. It's really fun. You can do oh. it. We believe in you. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank, thank you for, for the question. question. Yeah. Uh, I will ask this one, which is our pen ultimate question in this mailbag number five. Pen ultimate. From <gasps> CRI, I think. I finally made it to swim second year, and it, absolute, it is absolutely crazy that they got 10 levels over the first year. Wasn't originally <laughs> intended for levels to come more slowly, but then the story asked for more power as the players continued along. Will level progression slow as later years come along? If you're even planning that far ahead, you fucking got me. Yes, 100%. <laughs> they, they were like level six, and then they killed Nesca, and I was like, no, you don't level up. Duh. No, because I was envisioning like a shorter campaign, right? I was like, oh, this will end sooner. Maybe they'll be level 12 when you finish it. They're level 12 now, okay? And uh, it's <laughs> the players like when you level them up, I've been told. What? Yes. what? So, like I love being leveled up. Things? I love that being good powerful. Dopamine. It Shut makes up. your job harder as a dungeon master because it's hard to balance all these fucking magic users. Um, <laughs> but yes, the scope of the game expanded greatly. And now I have to come up with greater threats. And uh, ex and, and, and this story has gotten um, the main story, the, what you might call the main plot hook has gotten um, buried beneath eons. Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy and mm -hmm. other plot hooks. Corporations, <laughs> return corruption. In the end of this, uh, as we uh, approach the end of this game. Um, Soon. But as we approach the end of this game, we so do so approach the end of the Q&A. It is now time, a time-honored tradition <laughs> among us all, to read the last question. Oh, which boy. was just delivered <laughs> to my hands in a sealed envelope from uh, support staff off screen. Oh, Carla. shit. Whoa, you're unscrolling this. It's, it, it's a tapestry that's... <laughs> Unscrolling out to the length of the entire room? It's, it's crazy. Yeah, uh, this is ending on the of that. Oh, goodness. It just went. This is like the elegant fence. handwriting, too. What's this the all done in like actual ink? Okay, we should probably get through this uh, before going, it yeah. takes up all the space in this building. And oh, my God. Us. It's not stopping. Oh, oh no. Gosh, quick. Carla, can you answer it so we can roll Carla, it up. Come on, you have to it's, save us, Carla. Is so Carla, only you can save us. Okay. Someone peek okay. Okay. screaming. Come okay. on. Okay. 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 Hi. Howdy. So I'm keeping this one short this year because I didn't come up with a question that required amazing in depth thought as usual. So Elrich Straithen is the name of Delnus' father. What's interesting is that Elrich is derived from the Anglo Saxon name Alefric, which means elf ruler. Which is insanely funny because that means that man cannot hold a bad bitch for the life of him. <laughs> beside the point, but whatever. But his name implies that Anglo Saxons exist. Now, famously, the Anglo-Saxons were a Germanic tribe and their raiding, Germanic tribes, not the Saxons specifically, before some of these people get on my ass, is somewhat attributed to the fall of, you guessed it, Rome. Now, Rome becomes Italy. Well, it didn't become Italy. Rome is still a part of Italy, but like, it's not dude in togas, right? It's like normal people mermaids. Now, what's even more interesting is that Italy is really known for pasta, but it's not actually native to Italy. Instead, it probably came from China. When that dude, Marco Polo, named after the water game his parents liked to play, went over there and was like, damn, this is bomb. I'm going to take this back to Italia. And then no, it became a big thing in Italy right. because... <laughs> what? You have to say it right. It has an accent. Italia. Oh, I'm gonna take this back to Italia. <laughs> and then that became a big thing in Italy because yeah, I mean, pasta is kind of fire. It is the same thing for tomatoes, but this time it's when they go, I'm gonna go colonize the Amer- Wait, wait. I'm <laughs> gonna go colonize the Americas, which isn't as cool, notably not as cool. Anyways, there's also a place in Italy called Sicily and there was a pretty big period of lawlessness. I don't know why I'm Googling a lot of things for this bit and I'm about to do fucking more research. And because of that lawlessness, eventually locals formed their own militias and then those militias eventually became the mafia. Now, what this means is that it's entirely possible that you sit down to eat at a restaurant in Arrows and the guy goes you gabbed your last goal before icing not like for cake but with a gun like the pop 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 <laughs> because you look funny anyways so like can you answer in reverse order in terms of age what's your favorite consolation thanks Luca <laughs> well we have to answer Sagittarius <laughs> Sagittarius Wait, what the fuck is reverse order in this what the oldest to the youngest oh shit Sagittarius <laughs> I'm older than you, Aries. Sagittarius. <laughs> <laughs> what 
What's happening? What's your favorite <laughs> constellation? Oh, are we all? Oh, we're talking about like, wait, what do you mean by age? We are I'm so the bro, oldest are, answers y'all first, are, then the youngest. Y'all are, <laughs> y'all, <laughs> everyone here has zero intelligence. <laughs> Not you. Not you. You you, you obviously were not part of that. You obviously were not part of that. I'm sorry. Were you not the one who was like older than Sam? (laughs) I thought we were fucking talking about like the oldest constellation, and Uh, I was like, how the fuck do we know what's the oldest constellation? Sagittarius. Uh, Okay, so we got a Sagittarius, an Aries, and a Sagittarius. Well, I'm not gonna like. I like the Big Dipper because, like, that's one of the first constellations that I learned when I was a kid. And also Orion's Belt. Oh, damn it. You took mine. (laughs) I'm sorry. I also like Orion's Belt. Sagittarius. Uh, Thank you, Luca, for that question. Thank you, everyone, for contributing to this year's Q&A. Mailbag number five. It was Mailbag number five. Uh, Until we talk to you next, dear listener, you can join the Discord. You can join the Patreon if you want. Uh, There's merch if you want. Uh, And Tremerch.com. 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 Goodbye. We will never see you guys ever. Thank you for five years of support and love. We'll be back as soon as we are refreshed and relaxed from our beach vacation. And we will let you <laughs> know job? when that we are is. All it's just going beach. to the same beach. <laughs> Until then, bye bye. Until then, bye-bye. everybody, bye. take care. Speaking of constellations, did you guys ever. My favorite is Sagittarius. Oh.